It is Super Nanny Saturday. I am so happy that you are here to join me as we watch The Man Family. So grab yourself a beverage and let's dive in. Naomi was from birth a challenging baby. Mimi. She's very difficult to try to rationalize with. It's really like dealing with a two or three year old. <laughs> this little girl, she needs some discipline. When Naomi doesn't get her way, it's extremely unpredictable. She becomes unmanageable. She's the mistress of mayhem in our family in many, many ways. Ooh, this looks a lot like last week's episode where we talked about difficult temperaments. You know, the kids who go from zero to 60 and you're wondering what the heck just happened because everything was fine and now everything's really not fine. I want you to picture a room full of toddlers. There's toys everywhere, kids are playing. A child with an easy temperament will get their toy taken away and they'll go, oh, okay. And then they just pick up another toy. A child with a difficult temperament will get their toy taken away. The bodies of flailing arms, legs, screaming, and they're losing their mind, right? You're, you're like, it was just a toy to you. You're like, it's just, there's plenty of other toys. There's, there's actually a toy that looks just like that, dude. We don't get to choose what kind of temperament we get, what kind of child we get with what temperament, just like we don't get to choose what color I, well, we do now because of science, if you really go into the depths of that. But for now, we don't get to choose their temperament, but we do get to choose how we respond to a temperament, and I don't know if you guys caught it, but I most certainly did, is mom said, I can't rationalize with her. When a child is in an explosive episode, they're doing the whole thing, the last thing they need is for you to quietly kneel down in front of them and start talking to them about sharing and about how this is how we make friends. And in order to have friends, we share with them. And there are so many other toys here. You're trying to talk to a child who is way down here in their brain and you're accessing this. Right now, I want you to picture that that area is like beep, flat line. You can't rationalize with a child who's in the middle of an explosive episode. If I ask you again to go to your room, you're getting a paddle. Get back in the crib or I'm gonna paddle your hiney. We happened to go to a uh, church children's seminar on discipline and it was advocated that we use paddling. Not good. If you're not new here, you already know how I feel about corporal punishment. And if you happen to be new, just know that it may work short term because your kid's scared of you. But it's not going to work long term because what are you going to do? Hit your 13 year old? And more importantly, it's unnecessary. You can have rules and boundaries and consequences that are not physical and teach your child so that one day when they walk into the world, they know what to do when they're angry. They know what to do when they're around elders and authority and how to be respectful. These are skills that we can teach and that we can uphold with those boundaries and consequences that are developmentally appropriate. I said if you got out again, you were gonna get a paddle. I love you, but you may not disobey mama. Now you stay in your crib. You may give me a hug. I love you. I mean, what's going on? One minute, mum's spanking the kids. The next minute, she's hugging and kissing them. I mean, this is really mixed messages. I have chills. I have chills because it's so messed up to be hit by the person who loves you. And while they're hitting you, they're telling you they love you. And I'm not going to go on and on forever about this because if you don't like what I'm saying, you probably clicked away already. And if you do like what I'm saying, you don't need to hear it again because you already know that you were a child of this or you're trying to do something different in your family and that's why you're here. So enough blabbering. Let's get to what to do instead. I feel like I could be violent with her and at times I have. I've t at times I've taken her by the back of the neck and I've walked her up the stairs and I've pushed her onto her bed 
I'm gonna close the door and I, you stay there until I come up and get you. Did you just feel like... I'm what? just totally exasperated. I don't like her. Mm -hmm. I don't want her in my house. Mm -hmm. I don't want her around my children, mm -hmm. my other children. To hear that just sent shivers down my spine. I appreciate this mom's vulnerability and how she shares these dark thoughts and she verbalized them, verbalizes them in a way that people at home are able to go, oh my gosh, I feel like that. But I worry that these children go off to be adults and then they watch these raw moments on camera that live forever. I worry that I cover this show and am I doing more harm than good? And then I remember and I remind myself that Joe Frost doesn't just go into these homes and exploit these children. She goes into these homes and helps these families. And even more so, she helps all the families that are watching the episodes, who are seeing the change from hitting the children to whatever the end of this episode is. So I hope that it does more good. And it allows families to feel seen, allows people to be seen. Oh my gosh. We have to look up the update at the end of this video. If you watched last week's episode, again, it was the one that I mentioned earlier, the update was not good. I'm not even going to share what the update was, but it's in the comments of last week's episode, uh, the McKinney family. And I, I just, it's such a tragedy that I don't even think it's necessary to watch the entire episode. I hope that this family's update is not like that. I'll do it at the end. We'll look at it at the end together. And hopefully it's good. All right, let's keep going and let's get to the learning part. Let's get to the application and what can we do instead? Let's get to the good part. Can we skip to the good part? <laughs> I'm done, let's go. <laughs> Look, the kids are actually having fun. You want to take them away already? Yes, I'm ready to go, please. Trust no. and obey. Ow. Trust and obey. Mar, Mabui. you got to pick her up and move along. Please. Thank you. Ah. 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 Jo Frost takes the family to the beach. She wants to observe how do mom and dad work together. And she quickly finds out not well. There's no plan. Mom has no plan. Dad has no plan. If you plan to fail, you fail to plan. That's how it works. This is how teachers go on field trips with entire classes. Could you imagine if a teacher was like, I'm just going to wing it. And then the kids are running all over the zoo. No, they lay down the rules, the expectations. They have procedures in place. They know who's going to be in charge of the bathroom breaks and who's going to imagine. Imagine if there was no plan and a teacher went on a field trip. You're going to have problems when you go to the beach. You're bringing three-year-olds and a five-year-old. Somebody's going to go too far in the water. Somebody's going to get stung by a jellyfish. Somebody's going to get sand in their eyes. Somebody's going to have to pee. Somebody's hungry. There's always something happening. If you, if you bring a child to the beach, you have plans for all of those things. And mom and dad do not have plans. So Joe Frost probably notices that. She doesn't mention that part. But what she does mention is their communication with each other. There's no communication. It appears like mom is the leader where dad is following her, but her leading is very much reaction based. So she reacts to it and then she wants the husband to like know what to do and do it right away and jump when I say jump, yet he's trying to follow along and things are changing at all moments. We need to leave, we need to not leave, we need to leave, we need to not leave. If you're a leader in the relationship, it has to be easy to follow you. Uh, so I can only imagine what Joe Frost is going to have to say during that parent meeting. I'm not gonna wrap it all up, but I'll put a loose bandage on. But that, you won't put medicine on it. It doesn't need medicine. It'll stick. I'll go get you a bandage, okay? Yes, again, Naomi was browbeating her mom until she got her own way. I can feel the medicine. She rolls me eventually. I give in. Okay. I win, I win, I win. I always win again. We've said it on this channel before. If you say no, say it from the beginning. If it is a no, you have to stick with it no matter how much whining and complaining 
or don't say no to begin with. So let's say you want to stick with no. What do you do instead? Because we've done a lot of talking about like what's not right, but I like my channel to be used as, okay, well then what do I do, Kristen? Let's say your child wants this Band-Aid. You can apply it to any situation, but you know it's not going to happen. They want this candy at a place. They want this at the store. What you can do first is before the event happens, if you know it's going to be an issue, like let's say you're going to the store and you know they're going to ask to buy something, or you know that every night they're asking for a Band-Aid, before that situation even occurs, talk about it because they're still here in their brain. So you're on your way to the store and you go, oh, I know we're going to the store and I bet when we get to the store, you're going to want something. Do you think you're going to want something? And you're having that conversation or while they're brushing their teeth. You know, lately we've been putting band-aids on your foot, right? Yeah. And so you're talking about it when they're still able to hear you. And that's when you set the expectation. The expectation is laid out clear. After you've talked to them a little bit casually, you say, tonight we are not going to wear a Band-Aid. And then follow it up with, and I know that might be upsetting because you like to wear those Band-Aids, don't you? Now your child might start to travel from their frontal lobe down. So, and especially if they've been trained because you've given in in the, in the past, they might go there very quickly. If they have a difficult temperament, they might go there very quickly. But that's when you're going to be very strong and offer two good choices. I know that you are upset and you want a Band-Aid. When we get in bed, would you like me to read a book or would you like to do one last dance with me? Try to redirect to a positive choice that has nothing to do with the Band-Aid or that has nothing to do with the candy at the store. So if you're in the car, you say, and when we get in the store, we're not going to buy anything today. I know that sometimes we buy something, but today we are not going to buy anything. Would you like to sit in the shopping cart or do you wanna hold my hand while we're in the store? Do you wanna be the person to cross out the list or do you wanna be the person to put everything in the shopping cart? Give them some kind of job or something to do where they can shift their brain from what they were thinking about, which is I want Band-Aid, I want candy, I want fill in the blank, and you're getting ahead of it. And then once you have laid down that choice, if they still refuse, that's when you look at them and you go, this is hard. You really wanted that Band-Aid. Your choice is I can read with you or we have a dance party. If you don't choose, then I will choose for you. And then you choose, and let's say they refuse to read with you or they refuse to do the dance party. You just look at them and you say, this is hard. And I think tomorrow we will try again with either a dance party or reading. And I really hope that we get to do one because I think we'll have fun. And then just leave it. Let them flail their body on the bed. Let them have their emotional tantrum in the car before you get in the store. That's why you're doing it before. And then by repeating this over and over again, your child will trust that what you say you will do and that you're going to follow up on that expectation. And then they no longer fight you and it'll be less and less and less. You're going to be gentle, right? Sorry? <clears throat> You're going to be gentle. I'm going to be truthful. So the first thing I want to talk about is discipline. Your messages are mixed. We had the meeting with the parents and most of these parent meetings look exactly the same. If you've seen a few Super Nanny episodes, you see the pattern. She goes in there, she says all the things that are not okay, like the corporal punishment, the inconsistencies, the mixed messages. And then she says, we're gonna work on some techniques, the stay in bed technique and some other things. And then she makes sure that the parents are on board. Yes, we're on board and we're ready to work. <laughs> Give me a meanie. You're not in the club, mom. And you're not my mother. Only yesterday in this situation, mum would have resorted to spanking. You're mean and 
Thank you, Mom. Yes. 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 When a child starts saying things like, I hate you, you're the worst, they spit, they, they keep going, it's because they're, they're just doing more to see what's going to work. They're throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing any, if anything sticks. So whatever your plan is, whether it be the naughty chair and timeout, which is one tool of many consequences, um, you have to stick with it. Stick with and let like what Joe Frost says, let all the words, they're going in one ear and out, out the other. This way, this way, whatever way it is. I know that it's hard. And if you need to put in headphones or, you know, step into another room, take a deep breath, step outside as long as your children are in a safe place. Everything that's happening during an explosive episode is not meant to be taken taken personally. This child is not thinking logically. Okay, now we're gonna walk across the path here and we're gonna go to the playground. We're all, do we, oh, wait, 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 wait. Aye, 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 look at this. We have to look both ways, look to the left. Are there oh. any cars? Nora, 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 wait, wait. At this stage, when you've got two and two, you now need to be in the middle, okay? Okay, okay we're gonna cross then. I love this. I love this. Joe Frost gives him a shirt that says on the job, I think. And now she's teaching him how to teach his kids to cross the road safely. If you have a child that is continually having a problem, such as running across the road, what you're going to want to do is practice it, teach it. So go out to your front yard and then you show them how we hold hands and make it fun where you say, oh, let's stomp like an elephant across the road. Oh, what else we can do? We can slide, we can slither like a snake, we can glide like an ice skater. And then it becomes more fun instead of just running away. When you apply it to a real life situation, talk about it on your way in the car. Oh, when we get there, we're gonna be in the parking lot and we're gonna cross the road. Which animal do you wanna be today? And then they're focusing on the animal. They're not focusing on running to the playground. If you have more than one child and you have one child in particular that is the runner, you can have their job be the special crossing guard and they wear, you know, the little, you know, the little belts safety patrols wear at schools. <laughs> you guys remember that? And they wear the belts and they're the ones because sh nothing makes a strong-willed child happier than being the one in charge. <laughs> And it helps, that's what teachers do. When kids have jobs and they have certain things to do, it keeps their mind and their body busy and then the, the misbehavior just doesn't occur. Uh, soap, check. You got a comb or a brush? Comb. Um. Melissa, before we go, who's gonna have which kids? It's up to you. I've, I've got Naomi and Madeline. I have this Daniel and Nora, okay. Bingo. Now they were prepared, it meant that half the battle was won. Redo of the beach. <laughs> they're at the beach again, but this time they have a tag team chart on how they're gonna get ready, who's in charge of what, they divide who has which kids, and then as the day progresses, they call out to each other, hey, so-and-so's running up to the beach, you got that one? All right, I got this one. Because having four children, for both parents to be watching all four, is not as effective as one parent watching two and another parent watching two. Teachers do this too. Mrs. So-and-so, you got this group? Okay, Mr. So-and-so, you have this group? Okay, I have this group. Divide and conquer, divide and conquer. And then if you only have one or two kids, guess what? You can give each other breaks. So you say, hey, you got the kids? Okay, you got the kids. Okay, I got them now, you take a break. And then magically, Oh my gosh, imagine a day where you can actually close your eyes on the beach without like one eye open, like you're hoping a kid, a kid isn't drowning. This is your first night in your big bed. And sure enough, separating the kids had an immediate effect because Madeline and Nora fell asleep straight away. The next job, however, was keeping Naomi and Nathaniel in their own bedroom. Sorry, I'm turning the light, light off. No, 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 I don't like you. Good night. I don't like you. Good night. I don't like Good night. you. 
stay in bed technique, took two hours with four kids, and I love what dad said, and Joe Frost loved what dad said, which is not once did he have to get upset or hit his children. And those two hours will only become less and less as they are consistent. I know Mark feels really overwhelmed, but he's not alone. I mean, at last count, 6,000 sets of triplets were born every year in the USA. There's so many groups out there that cater towards mums and their experiences with their children. But what about the dads? What about the guys who changed the diapers? So I took dad out to meet up with a couple of other guys who are the fathers of triplets, who understand exactly what he's going through. Stop. Joe Frost found, well, the production team found other dads of triplets. Love it. If you feel alone, there's somebody else who's in a similar situation. If you have a child that's neurodivergent with ADHD or autism, or you have triplets, or you have twins, or you get involved, get involved and talk to other parents. Even if you just have a neurotypical child and you're struggling, that's why they have breastfeeding support groups and mommy groups. And it's because sometimes things are just hard. And even if you do all the techniques, it's still hard. It's a hard job. So when you get to vent to other parents and feel like, oh gosh, I'm not alone. It's, it's good. Um, <laughs> I am going home. Having Joe here has really empowered me and given me hope that I can become the kind of parent that I'm supposed to be. Keep in touch. You too, Joe. Naomi. It was very hard to say goodbye to Joe. You take care. Listen, listen, listen. Happy ending. As always, let's check out the update. 13 years later, we'll start with Melissa's Instagram, which is the mom. We have a photo from a few years ago. This is from 2020. It looks like they're all skiing together. I don't, know, I don't know where dad is. Maybe he's taking the picture. I do see some comments on here about how she's reformed and she doesn't spank anymore. Uh, so let me know if you know somebody named their cat Naomi. <laughs> Let me know if you know any other information on the Mann family. I wish them well, as I always do. My computer is pretty much done. My voice isn't even matching my body right now. Uh, so if you enjoy this kind of content, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.